off with you. Early memories are overshadowed by a terrifying death, a tempest of teeth, scales and snarls. You never imagined it would end like this. You are ever sodden, ever sandy. The smell of guts and sea waste cling to you like a ghost. You sought freedom, the life of a seaman, but you didn't find it. Looking around Fort Joy, you feel excited. A new environment to explore, 
new people to meet, new challenges to overcome. Who knows what could happen here? Rubbish. Cowrie, cockle, clam. Care for those seeds, my friend. The Powerful foster life.
Patience, Mal. Patience. Patience. Patience, Mal. Patience. Cowry, cockle, clam. Tides in and out and in again. They said you'd be red, but I didn't think so... so very red. Hmm. Yes, of course. They told me all about you. Oh, they jabber something frighteningly. Thank you, but I'll be quite all right soon. <clears throat> yes. Soon, soon, soon. Being suddenly roused startled me. Swept between sleep and awakening, I could not be certain. Is it really him? The very one I've been waiting for? It is you. <coughs> All rugged and ragged. How the mighty have fallen. Mm -hmm. Ascension. Ah, just the word. Just the thing the vision show me over and over. Spinning like a windmill, incessantly. The they I spoke of, O oh Majesty, are my dreams, the brain born of sleep. I see you in my wondrous foggy fantasies, sire. They speak to me. They say that you are the one that will bring about the change. But there are those that oppose the change. There are those that want you quite, quite dead. I cannot say. I do not know. For you, your majesty, for your life and for your destiny. See, this is the very X in the crux of the capital M'd matter, Prince. What we must speak of is very delicate. What we must speak of is very dangerous. What I must know, I do not know when I'm awake. What I must tell, I must tell you out in the great sleep.
And an honor it will be, your highness. All we need to do is close our eyes and let... <coughs> sleep take us by the hand. Then we shall meet in the great realm of dreams, where the whispers will reach me, and through me their words will be yours. There, um, there's one little, <coughs> let's call it, complication, though. Dear me, this is frightfully embarrassing for a dreamer to say, but, uh, I find myself quite unable to dream. My sleep has become blind and silent. I want to aid you, of course, my lord. Indeed, I need to aid you. But I am in just as desperate a need of my medicine. The leaf that enlightens Trudene. Should I partake of the leaf, Prince, we will both know what it is the spirit of sleep wants us to tell you. Not mm, quite, no. See, I have some, yes, but I... I stole it. They think it was an elf that did it, a Myro. They locked him in a cage. I'm torn, Your Highness. I should return the Drudene and set the elf free, but I really, <coughs> really want to dream and see. Yes, uh, mm, of course. I cannot deny you, Prince, whatever my reservations. Let us partake. Stingtail reaches into his pocket and fishes out an orange, telling you it is in pieces of fruit that he hid his contraband. He devours it greedily, and his eyes begin to glaze. A yawn, a few mumbled words, and the lizard falls asleep. You sit in the sand, close your eyes, and follow him. From shadow comes sunshine, your home. You're in your own palace atop the great library tower. You behold the Forbidden City, only it's infinitely bigger than you remember. A sea of white marble that reaches as far as the eye can see. Stingtail is here too, but when he addresses you, another voice lurks behind the dreamers. From shadow comes sunshine. Quite right, your majesty. But not if the shadow gets its way. You have questions. In here, I have answers. The shadow itself. The house of shadows. It is real, and it is all about us. It is the pale face caught in the corner of one's eye that makes us turn around in sudden terror of the unperceived. No one knows the House of Shadows exists. Therein lies its victory. But we, the dreamers, we know them. And we do not leave them to weave their black webs around our empire unperturbed. The mighty houses of war and law, they are the true shadows unaware of the dark sun that rules their days. Now, the House of Shadows moves against you, but in the House of Dreams, you have an ally. We pledge allegiance to you, a one and only prince, a one and only king to be. We see the golden throne. We see you, the shimmering flame, amid the gold. Of course you are. The spouse of the sun, 
the Red Prince, and so much more. Quite so, but let's not discuss the change just yet. Stingtail stung too soon. Right now we must ensure your safety. Should you perish, the change perishes with it. You must escape from the island you are on, break through Fort Joy's walls, and venture into the Hollow Marshes. Another dreamer awaits there, Bahara. She is a far greater dreamer than this Stingtail. She can take you further through the realm of dreams, for much further you must go. So wake now, Prince. Wake and be wary. Be wary of the shadows that would snuff out the sunshine. You wake up, as does Stingtail. He yawns and stretches his arms. <coughs> well now, mm. what a dream that was. What a palace we saw. Can't say I remember much else, though. <coughs> Not a jot. I saw you atop a tower. I reached out to address you. But after that, all went blank. My lord, you mustn't say such things aloud. Not in this world. What if they hear? They could be anywhere. So was it really of them that the dream voices spoke? Good, good. I don't know of how much help I, I'll be, but I'm glad to hear we're on the side of Red Prince. Long may your majesty live, <coughs> and long may be your reign. You know, I could tell you all about Swamp Dreamers, too, if I chewed that much through the knee. Oh, do hold your prickly tongue. Not drawing many winning cards of late, but I won't be crying over it. Sailed away from my last island prison scot-free. No reason I can't do it again. As you're about to walk away from the lizard, Sibyl cups your chin between thumb and index finger, then guides your eyes to hers. Listen, I need to have a chat with this here morsel of flesh. He has wronged me once, but may just do right by me this time. To your surprise, Sibyl proceeds to throttle the unsuspecting lizard with one hand as she drives the tip of her needle into his lower belly with the other. Then the questions commence. You hear him yelp about the master, lone wolves, and a man called Griff. Then, quite suddenly, there's blood everywhere as Stingtail falls to the ground, face first into his own intestines. Sibyl heaves a sigh of satisfaction, and as she wipes her needle clean, shoots you a cursory look. Chat's over. So, that seemed just a tad excessive. Hmm? Something on your mind? It's simple. He scarred me, so I scarred him. Extensively. She defies you with devilishly innocent eyes. Can you blame me? There it is. I was wondering when your spying would make an appearance. Anyway, what's dead is done, so let's move on, shall we? Despite my high hopes, this scar disfigures me still. The search for the Master continues, of course. 
Hungry work, the hunt. And you know what? I'm feeling a bit peckish. Stingtail mentioned a cook, as it happens. A fellow named Griff. Two birds, one stone. How about it?
as you're about to walk away from- Listen, I need to have a chat. To your sub- You hear him yelp, but <sighs> then, quite Seville heaves- Chat's over. So, that seemed just a tad excessive. What you witnessed was an exercise in restraint. And jolly good fun to boot. Something on your mind? Can you blame me? Everything Don't now? tell anyone where Good. you got this, eh? Please. <laughs> I... Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did meet so much. Still on your feet, eh? Glad to hear it. Fit only the finest, you know. Ain't fit for beasts. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did meet so much.
If a magister finds this on you, you forget my name here. Keep it down, will you? Finds this on you. You forget my name here. Take your coins. Eh? Fit for beasts. Still on your feet, eh? Glad. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves didn't eat so much. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves didn't eat so much. Ain't fit for beasts. Fit for beasts. Ain't fit for beasts. Thank you. 
I'm fit for beasts. Worse than war rations, these. Ain't fit for beasts. Sibyl gently play. Ain't fit for beasts. the beasts. Worse than war rations, these. if those bleeding dwarves did need so much. Sibyl gently places a hand on the small of your bag. Her mouth... Let me have a word with the gentleman, would you? 
I've a little clue to follow up on. Sibyl's... Some more rations, please. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did need so much. Magister finds this on you. You forget my name here. Everything there? Good. Don't tell anyone where you got this, eh? Take your coin then. Worse than war rations, please. If a magister finds this on you, you forget my name here. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did need so much. I got that special shipment you was asking after. Got it. Sibyl gently places a hand on the small of your bag. Her mouth reaches your ear with a whisper. Let me have a word with the gentleman, would you? I've a little clue to follow up on. Sibyl steps forward and asks Griff the cook about the lone wolves. A dead little birdie told her he's the man to talk to. A little back and forth ensues. Money crosses hands and before you know it, Sibyl stands back beside you all smiles. Thank you. We should make good on our escape, you know. I have to see a man about a wolf in the hollow marshes. Did I disappoint you? Oh, but don't worry. I might just have to push the next fella a little further. Zalaskar's his name. A name for the taking, if it comes to that. Here's the goods. Griff glances from his blade. 
to you and back again. Griff tears into one of the oranges with both hands. Juice squirts through his hands as he desperately rips through the rind. These ain't right. Something's missing from these oranges, bub. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Hand it over. Oh, you must think I'm playing with you. I don't <coughs> play. Hand them over. and slow. Careful. Don't want to catch... She smiles and gives you a long, meaningful look. These. Psst. Hey, you're a little light in your pack there, gorgeous, ain't ya? Who could blame you with the garbage they got for sale round here? Why don't you take a gander at the goodies I got? Stuff you won't find anywhere else in camp. Procured by special means. Oh, nice try, Midge. Now, uh, put that shiner away and I'll shave a little off the top, how about? Still on your feet, eh? Glad to hear it. Feel free to... Yet so quickly, we find Source so dangerous. So Void Woken are attracted to Source, but quiet. When another divine arises... Hey, Freshy! What you heard about a crate of stolen supplies?
Careful. Don't want to catch Griff in a bad mood. Careful. Don't want to catch Griff in a... She smiles and gives you a long, meaningful look. Dwarves did need so much. Nice and slow. Hands out in your pockets now. I fear it will be quite some time before we find any answers at all. Change your mind about my... She seems to fight the smile that appears at the corners of her lips. Oh, get well, yeah. When another divine arises, will source change back? What if there are no sorcerers left? Yet so quickly, we find source so dangerous. What in his death caused it? Change your mind about my offer, yeah. But why? She's gone. When another divine arises, will source change back? What if there are no sorcerers? Why hasn't Alexander It's time to accept reality. Your loss, my friend. Right, Dad, my sweet cat. Fellas got more right, 
<laughs> That's it. I call court. Pay up. The woman looks up as you are. What do you need? Who in their right mind would think of a thing like this? <laughs> <laughs> 